everyone. Um, my name's uh, Reed Passmore. I'm a PhD student at Georgia Tech. Um, I currently study at UC Davis, though. Um, and today I'm going to present some of my findings from my dissertation research on cycling routing derived from GPS traces uh, using OSM tags and some municipal data. A quick overview. Um, first, I'm going to go over some really brief basics on routing, um, then talk about kind of the current state of cycling routing. Uh, improving cycling routing with uh, GPS traces. Oh, thank you. Um, demonstrating this process, and then going some through some discussion points and then concluding. Uh, so starting with routing background, if you're not familiar, routing is just the process of finding the optimal route between point A and point B. Um, we look at street networks as network graphs where the streets here are edges, or I'm gonna refer to them as links. And the intersections are nodes. Um, there's a cost of traversing links um, that is often represented as time, uh, but can be any sort of unit. But in this case, I used minutes. Um, and there can also be turn impedances. So if you're going from one link to another, one street to another, and it's a left turn, you can add in an additional impedance for that. And then the shortest path algorithms uh, solve for a series of links that connects point A and point B. Um, so if you've ever driven, um, then you probably know what the primary impedance that a driving routing algorithm would use, it's travel time. Um, and that's relatively straightforward uh, and does have some complications when you have to consider congestion. Uh, but for cycling, um, travel time's not really a good measure. And often that's because the most direct, ra direct route is not the safest. Um, and we see this in research, cycling route decisions are often affected by road attributes, uh, such as the number of lanes on the road and the speed limit as well as the elevation in the presence of bike infrastructure. Um, so there's this need for kind of like cycling specific routing that is considering more than just travel time. There are a lot of um, existing cycling routing algorithms out there. I'm not gonna list them all, but there's a lot of open source ones. Um, there's trip planning apps that have bike specific components to them. There's fitness apps um, who I think use user data uh, there's a couple instances of municipal trip planners that have bike-specific routing in them. And then occasionally you'll find the regional travel demand model that's maintained by a metropolitan planning organization for a region uh, could have um, some considerations for cycling routing in there. Uh, now the big question is always like, how do you actually calibrate a cycling router? Um, I, I was talking to some of the developers of Bike Hopper, uh, which is an open source uh, routing software used in the Bay Area. And one of the things that they showed me is that they use this uh, route called the Wiggle in San Francisco. It goes between two neighborhoods, but it's essentially the way you can take that avoids going up a lot of hills. Uh, and it's a le relatively low stress route, but it's really just a mixed street with cars. Like there's nothing special about it bike infrastructure wise. Uh, but oftentimes uh, routers will get this wrong and they'll send you up a steep street or they'll put you on a street that might be not that steep, but really busy. Uh, so their solution is to kind of use this. Um, but I'm wondering if we can maybe use GPS traces to improve cycling routing. So a GPS trace um, is just a series of points uh, that show you where you were, and they have some timestamps and other information attached. Uh, I believe some routers are using GPS traces, or at least some aggregated force of it already to improve the routing. Um, there are some blog posts uh, by Ride with GPS that kind of mention this. But usually the methods aren't like typically disclosed, they're not um, open source uh, that I can tell from. And additionally, this is like not very well covered in research. So research kind of focuses on cycling route choice, which is a different topic. So one paper I did find looked at routing as an optimization problem. And so here you're finding the link impedances uh, that maximize the average overlap between what you're modeling or routing and what uh, was actually chosen. And so here, uh, link and turn impedances are determined through a function, and that function has unknown parameters that are selected. And the paper that I looked at that did this utilized uh, stochastic optimization to do this, and then they were able to increase their overlap uh, between the two by about 30%. Um, just to briefly mention this overlap variable, uh, so what this means is it's, so if you have a route that you modeled and you have what route was actually taken, uh, it's the intersection between the two. Uh, you count how the shared length among them, and then you divide it by the union. Uh, so that would be the shared length among them plus the ones that are specific to the chosen or the modeled. And this gives you a value between zero and one. 
and then you want to maximize this mean. So just to give a quick little flow chart of what this process looks like, uh, you start by selecting your coefficients for your impedance functions. You assign these to your network. Um, you do the shortest path routing to get your model trips, and then you start calculating the average overlap uh, by calculating the overlap for each trip. And then you determine whether or not you've reached convergence, um, and if not, you repeat this step until you have, um, and once you have, the optimization is finished. Um, so a quick demonstration I did for this um, was for the Atlanta area, so this is where we have GPS traces for. Um, we used Geofabric, uh, an OSM extract that Geofabric prepared, I uh, had about 180,000 links and 150,000 nodes. Uh, we used Osmium and OSMNX to process that into a network graph format so we could route on it. And then we brought in data from USGS to add some elevation data. And then additional bike facility information came from the city of Atlanta and then also Atlanta's uh, MPO, the Atlanta Regional Commission. The OSM tags that we were using um, really were just two, uh, highway and cycleway. Um, so the highway was used to identify roads with mixed cycling and vehicle traffic, and then also used to identify major roads, and in this case we used a uh, trunk and above as what classified as a major road. And then cycleways were just used to identify uh, on-street bicycle infrastructure. Uh, there were some attributes that we really wanted but weren't available for our um, like local net network, like speed limit, number of lanes, and street parking. Um, so we weren't able to use these. And then before we did any of the routing, we filtered out uh, restricted access roads like interstates, uh, sidewalks, service roads, and private roads uh, from the network. For our GPS trace data, this actually comes from a while ago. There, there was a, um, an app called Cycle Atlanta, which branched off from an app called Cycle Tracks. Um, but we have uh, about 3,000 of these map matched uh, to our OSM network. Um, and we selected randomly uh, a thousand of these and then split them into a training and a test set. Uh, the variables that we're using, uh, right now they're all Boolean, so they're either true or they're false. Um, for the link variables, we use mixed traffic with the bike facility and without, and then if the grade of that link was above 4%. And then for turns, uh, we had a, a turn impedance that found unsignalized crossing of a major road with a minor road. So if you reach an intersection and you have a stop sign, um, but the road that you're crossing doesn't, and it's a large road. As for our impedance functions, uh, we started with this basic link impedance um, as travel time, um, just cycling at nine miles per hour. Atlanta's kind of hilly and it has a lot of signals, uh, so that's a pretty leisurely pace. Um, our basic turn impedance started at zero, and we actually look at the link impedance functions. Um, what that means for link impedance is that this additional value, this one plus sigma beta x parameter, um, so each of the betas uh, stands for the coefficients that we're selecting. X stands for that zero or one value associated with the variable. Uh, so the beta is essentially measuring the proportion increase in travel time. And then for turn impedance, uh, because there is no base impedance, um, that beta is actually just measuring the time increase. Uh, once we did our calibration process, this is pretty computationally intensive. It took about two and a half hours. Um, and then our outputted link coefficients uh, for mixed traffic, no bike facility uh, was 0.46. Uh, for with bike facility, 0.12. And then above 4% grade was 1.53. So uh, the m magnitudes of the no bike facility and with bike facility, that checks out, that's good. Um, we would expect that no bike facility would be higher than with bike facility. And the fact that the above 4% grade sort of indicates that people are trying to avoid these steep roads. And then for our turn coefficients, um, this is measured in travel time. So for these unsignalized major road crossings, it was 1.34 minutes. So people are detouring out of their way to not try to do these. They're probably detouring to where there is a signal. All right, so our overlap averages, um, in general, like across the board were pretty low and they were also pretty low for that study. Um, so for the training set, the shortest, just using travel time was 0.299. And then with our impedance, we get this really slight bump to 0.315. And similar story for the testing set. So we do see a slight improvement, but clearly more work is needed. When you actually look at the overlap values across the board, uh, this is the distribution of them. Um, here we see that improvements were made. Um, the x-axis is the overlap, and then the y-axis is frequency. 
But in this next or the section near 0% overlap, uh, you see this kind of large section. So these are trips that aren't being explained by travel time and not being explained by our impedance function. So here we either need to separate them and maybe apply a different impedance function to them to uh, address them. So discussion points. So our initial routes results show that some improvements uh, can be made, however, more work is needed. Um, we, my next step is really gonna be segmenting these trips. We have additional attributes about the trips, such as the um, user characteristics and the trip purpose uh, that we'll be using to help aid this process. Um, and you can kind of, if you're familiar with routing algorithms, you might think of this as similar to routing profiles. Uh, so for example, you might have a commute, non-commute option where the commute option is a little bit more direct, uh, but it's still safety conscious, and then the non-commute is more safety conscious. You could have one that's totally safety conscious. Um, you have one that's more recreation where they're not too concerned about going out of their way, and they want to find parks. All right, so for conclusions, um, generally for municipalities, and this more related to my thesis research, uh, but just using cycling routings as a means of looking at improvements in cyclability for new cycling facilities. For researchers, I think there needs to be more gap bridging between what we've done on route choice literature and routing. And then also just a study uh, comparing the various routers that are available would be pretty interesting. Uh, for OSM routers, um, just keep up with documentation on understanding how um, the routing changes when you're messing with the settings, and then also uh, offering uh, methods for calibrating one with local data. For mappers, just adding the tags that we already know influence cycling routing, like speed limit, number of lanes, and signals would be super helpful, and especially street parking, um, so that we can identify the door zone bike lanes. All right, and I have questions, contact info, um, my current GitHub repository, and then some audience questions if you wanna use that to spur anything. Thank you.